and I know one of the things that you do that uh, I know a lot of us uh, appreciate and take advantage of is the blog that you do mm -hmm. uh, and, and really trying to begin that communication process and it, it does start with you and you've You've started with that. Any feedback or, or anything you've gotten on that so far? It's actually been a great tool. Uh, you would think that in a market where there's five, five television stations uh, or three television stations, two news channels, I mean, uh, talk radio shows, as well as a newspaper, that information would get out there. But it often gets out in a really fragmented way. So the blog sometimes is a way for me to put out information in long form so that folks can understand maybe the issues behind that short headline or that short 30 second piece. Um, and that's been a critical tool for us. We've moved into social media with our Facebook page, Twitter. Uh, we use a, a lot, we use a lot of uh, technology now to keep in touch with parents uh, in terms of when school's closing as well as uh, what's going on in their schools. So we've become much more adept at communicating with parents. Next year, we're going to be, you'll be able to probably, we're working with the state to be able to check your child's grades online. Uh, right now, you get a progress report and a report card. And we're pretty sure the state's going to allow us to roll out a parent module next year to, so you can keep up with your child's uh, grades as they're being posted online and see how they're doing on a, on a real-time uh, basis as opposed to waiting for a four-week or a nine-week progress report. And so I think uh, we've talked a lot about improving communication, certainly with the business community, improving communication with parents. Uh, you know, the other uh, kind of key customer, if you will, that you have are the students. Mm -hmm. um, and so communication with students, you mentioned social media, uh, it's pretty much their life. I mean, so how, how have you seen communication with students changing and, and where is that headed? Well, and that's part of the reason why I like to get into schools, because you can have a conversation with, with the kids in the building, find out about what they think about their lunch program. I mean, I was at uh, one of our elementary schools, and they were just coming back from lunch, and I said, well, how was lunch today? And the look on their face was, tell me all I needed to know about lunch that day. Uh, <laughs> and I, I can't get that kind of feedback sitting at my desk. Uh, I, we're going to start at the uh, probably next month bringing in our uh, student leaders at their schools and sort of get some end of year feedback on things that we've done well from the student perspective. Um, but when you think of student, you think about how they communicate. I've got a son who's a sophomore in college. I remember three years ago walking into his room checking to see what he was doing for homework that night. Well, this is how he was wired. He had a laptop up with a Google search, two instant message conversations with old friends from New Hampshire. He had an iPod stuck in his ear. And he was working. That's how he operates. And I mean, here's a kid who was successful in school, honor graduate, uh, top 10% in his class, but that's how he's wired. Now you think about when kids walk into our schools. They slow down to come to school manually because they walk into a lot of places where it's them, 30 desk, and a total lack of technology in that, cl in, in that classroom for them. And so a lot, those kids are wired so differently than what we were. And that's a hard challenge for us in education, is to change what we're doing to match the students that we're getting. When it, and I, I met, talked to some middle schools at Murray uh, about a month ago, and we talked about what kind of world they're entering. They're not competing with folks from Fayetteville, Charlotte, or even LA. They're competing with folks from Singapore, London. Think about software development. If you work in an East Coast software firm, you spend eight hours a day developing software. You email that software then to somebody in China who wakes up, starts their day, works on it, who then forwards it on to somebody in Europe, India, or, or someplace else to work on it. And when you come back to work the next morning, that software has gone through two cycles of development, and you've been asleep for half the day on that one. And that's the kind of world our kids are, are, are entering. And we've got to make sure they've got the critical thinking skills, they've got the team skills to be able to operate in that kind of environment. Uh, when I got here, we used to, we, my first principal meeting, they handed out three inch notebooks and with all the material for that principal meeting. And I said, guys, we're not doing this. So we've now moved all of our principal meetings online and paperless. And it's just, I've got to get my adults to be using the technology if they're going to make the kids use the technology. And then in July, the boards, we've been running parallel systems with the board, paperless and paper. We're going to move them off of the paper and take them paperless as well. So I got to get the adults using the technology because then they'll turn around and make sure the kids are using the technology. Yeah, no, I've got to have my 10-year-old program the TV for me. So, um, 
You know, one of the things you and I have talked about is, uh, and you were just hitting on this a little bit, but I think just kind of a good time to kind of pause and talk about, you know, when we all think of school and school improvement, you know, give or take a few years, we're all, you know, relatively in the same kind of range of age in this room. And so, you know, we all start thinking back to when we were in school and our experience in school and, and kind of project that onto what it should be now for our children. And as you and I have talked about, School today is very different yep. and should be very different than we all went to school and kind of that, that mindset that we have. Talk to, uh, talk to us a little bit and help the audience appreciate how school is, is so different than when we were there. I call it educational nostalgia. It's education is the one experience that everybody in this room has had. We all went to school, whether it was we stopped in sixth grade or went on, but we all shape our beliefs on school based on that, on that assumption. If we went to college, we think everybody went to college. Reality, folks, college rate, only about 30% of Americans over the age of 25 have a college degree. So we need to step back and, and, and reframe it from what our picture of school is to what school needs to be. School's an industrial model. We operate the same kind of model and calendar we did at the, at the end of the uh, agricultural revolution moving into the industrial revolution. So we need to really rethink about what we're doing. And we're doing a little bit of it in high school, uh, why do you need, if you can, we have a model of high school that says four years. You start as a freshman, you graduate as a senior. Why is that the only model? We are looking at next year doing more stuff with online courses. As our budget gets tighter, we've got to find ways to expand the curriculum for those students. And one way we can do that is partnering with online. North Carolina has a great virtual public high school. And I can put kids into Mandarin Chinese and other languages that I can't get here because the numbers don't, don't want to allow me to do that or the costs won't allow me to do that, but I can open up the access to that. We're pushing some high school courses down into middle school so that middle schoolers can now walk out with some high school credit. Pushing college courses into high school so kids can walk out with college credit. My son is in his second year at college, is classified as a junior because he walked out of high school with 30 college credit hours through university, through partnerships with uh, community college and, and others online. Those are the kinds of experience that we need to be doing for our kids here in Wilmington. When you think about it, if a kid can graduate in three years, why stop them? If that's the track he wants to accelerate on, let them. If they need a fifth year, that's fine too. We can't, it's the idea of the, the old cookie cutter approach that everybody has to fit into that same model is long gone. If you go to elementary schools, I love elementary. Elementary is some of the most creative, teachers that we've got. Because they've got the same 30 students all day long. And you watch them transition students from activity to activity to activity. And th they couldn't do it if they had to have them sit there in desk all day long. And so they do a phenomenal job with that. They do a lot of grouping. They do a lot of teaming. And then the really good ones can take a class of 20 kids. And what they're hitting that top student with is different than what they're hitting that bottom student with. Because they know what the, what the range of abilities in, in those classrooms are. They do a lot of work with in-class assessment, with diagnostics uh, and differentiation, and it's just phenomenal to watch a top, uh, uh, one of those teachers just teach a class. You know, and one of the things you mentioned, actually, uh, you mentioned the workforce readiness survey that the, the chamber had done a few months ago, and one of the, the main things that came out of that is, you know, what businesses need students to learn more of is working in teams. Mm -hmm. And, and you know how they're going to work in the business world in, in teams and being able to interact with others and and as you mentioned that model is still you know kind of one teacher one student for the most part and I know we're transitioning some of that in the school system as well. A senior project is probably one of the best things we do as a county and it's one thing that New Hanover is one of the few counties that does this in terms of getting those students into some kind of experiential learning. Because uh, as part of that senior project, you have to go out, find a mentor to work with, do the research, and then do a presentation in front of a group as part of, before, you, before we'll let you uh, graduate. And those kinds of real world experiences are something that we've got to do a better job with. And that's, when we talk about where businesses can help us, that's one area where I'd love to see us partner more with businesses. Where in the summertime, can, are there experiences that we can put a kid into a summer internship program where they spend two weeks at, with, uh, if you're interested in engineering, work with Progress Energy. We had a partnership with Duke Energy where they would ran a two-week summer engineering program. 
And those kids would go to Duke Energy, and Duke Energy would rotate them through their different plants, uh, once a nuclear plant, coal fire plant, and a uh, gas fire plant, to show them all the different things that's there as it relates to the engineering field. The hospital would then, would also do the same thing with a number of our students, and that was probably the most popular one was our hospital internships, where they would rot rotate through different departments in the hospital, learn about the, the lab part, learn about the OR, and those kinds of things. In, a, in an extended summer learning experience where that's just what they're focused on. Uh, and, and those are kind of partnerships that are, that are invaluable to our kids. GE working with our uh, kids at uh, Freeman in the engineering program, bringing their skills into, the, in, into Freeman. When you look at Freeman, they've had a huge jump in their assessment schools over the last several years. And I think a lot of that is that math focus and that partnership piece working with the schools. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, one of the things we want to talk about today is really how the business community and, and the education system can really work together and engage each other at, at a more meaningful level. And you mentioned internships. And I know a lot of times when, you know, from the business perspective, we think, okay, the school system wants to work with us. First thing that means is, is a money or a check. Um, and as you and I have talked, that is, is so far down on, on your list, you'll certainly take it if anybody wants to write a check today. Write a check, I will take it. Um, but, um, you know, really there are other things. So talk about some of those things. I know. Um, we're talking about business and community partnerships as part of the strategic plan. Uh, you mentioned internships, but beyond just those internships, what kind of, of results would you like to see out of some of those business and community uh, school partnerships? Well, I want to see a couple of things. I want to see uh, some of our kids who need mentors. We talk about business, but I think we can build some relationships with our, those students who need mentors through those partnerships, building those kinds of connections. Uh, I'd like to see school, uh, when businesses spend time in schools, they, they get a better understanding of what goes on in those schools. Uh, and so I think that if, if our business folks understand schools and the business of schools, then they have a more positive understanding of, of what's going on. But also, I need our students to see what happens in business. They need to understand that what they're doing in the classroom has relevance beyond just the four walls of that school. And that connection piece is sometimes one of the hardest things to make is, OK, I'm studying algebra. What's the connection here? I'm studying geometry. Well, if I got a business company that's, if I got a construction company, geometry is an integral part of the design phase and the building phase of what they're doing. So I, that helps them build those kinds of real world connections. And so I think if I can build those connections, It'll help my schools with the kids. It'll help with kids in terms of seeing the relevance there. And eventually, it'll lead to the support piece that happens in schools. OK. Past, present, future digital. You live the moment. We'll make it last. Call us at 910-399-1820 or go online at ppfdigital.com.